You know, one of the things I've often wondered about when it comes to the Affordable Care Act is why they never addressed the first word, which is affordable. You, you go to the hospital, you walk in an emergency room, you don't know what anything costs. You walk out of there, and a few weeks later, you get a bill in the mail. And if you have insurance, well, it'll say an MRI is $4,000. Um, but if you have insurance, it's $1,500. And by the way, your copay is 100 bucks. But if you walk in that same hospital with no insurance, you'll pay that $4,000. It makes no sense. I, I mean, truth in pricing is really what we need in, in medicine in America. I've said that for a very long time. You need to know what you're buying because that'll give you some indication of how much you're spending and you can you can plan for it. The same now is going to be true for prescription drugs, getting a jump on this. Joining me, Seth Denson, the president and co-founder of GDP Advisors. Seth, welcome back to the program. Steve, always good to be with you. Always good to have you, my friend. And, and I understand that um, there's legislation that has been put through now. And so pharmaceutical companies, because they put these long-winded ads and people are running through fields and laughing and dancing with their children and it's going to save the planet. And, of course, then they have, you know, the the disclaimers that, you know, it causes this and this and this. And th- but now there's going to be a price on there. Please help me. What What's happening and why? Well, listen, this is a great step and just a continued process of what the Trump administration and Secretary Azar is trying to do, which is infuse transparency into the system. The healthcare system, a sixth of the U.S. economy, is the most opaque system known to man. You, you addressed it at the beginning uh, of the segment here in that you go in and you get services rendered. You have no idea what it's going to cost until weeks, sometimes even months afterwards. And even at that, it's real opaque in, in that you have some dollars that are covered by insurance and some that are copay and coinsurance, and it's all this really confusing mess. And so what the Trump administration is recognizing that in a free market system, for the consumer to have the power to drive the costs down and quality up, the consumer needs to have information. And we have been touting for this for years and promoting for this. You've said the same thing on your show a number of times. This is what we need to do. This is a great first step. It is a great first step because it opens up the door to take it to uh, health care all, well, all over America. Because the thing is, you wouldn't go buy an automobile and say, well, I want this. I'm going to do this. And, you know, I need that. And then wait a month or two and then get a bill in the mail and go, whoa, that, that, I, I can't believe it costs that much. I mean, there is nothing else that comes to mind in America except health care, where when you go seek treatment for whether it's in the emergency room or wherever it is, they don't say, okay, this is what it's going to cost. Unless, of course, you have no insurance, and they try to tell you the cost, I think, but but it's so all over the board. And again, if an aspirin costs $10, something's wrong with that picture. Right, or the $8 mucus recovery device you and I would call a tissue, right? I mean, this is, this is the challenge. And when you've got a healthcare system that, that hides its costs behind uh, the veil of uh, insurance, right, where 91% of Americans have some form of insurance, whether that be a government insurance, a private policy, or an employer policy, uh, it, by which they're accessing the market. The American public needs to start thinking about that insurance ID card like a credit card, because while it may only cost you, let's say, $100 at the time services are rendered, the $5,000 that they're billing to the insurance company, it's coming full circle. You're paying that in health insurance premiums. Sure. Check the stock market. Health insurance companies, not interested in losing money. So they they call tissues mucus recovery devices well that that's cute i i just call it a kleenex but but so it is you know let me ask you this seth well we've got you seth denson here president and co-founder of gdp advisors um the next great step for the left and democrats of course is to take the health insurance that we do have away from 180 or 200 million americans in favor of a all-encompassing um over arcing system from the government a single payer system, they call it, and, and to me, that would be, well, it'd be an absolute disaster. What are your thoughts? Well, listen, I'm glad you called it what it is, which is single payer. It's interesting. Somebody in the marketing department of the Democratic Party has figured out that Americans don't like the idea of single payer, but Medicare, for those that are on it, has a fairly high uh, popularity rating, and so they're calling it Medicare for all. But guess what? It's not Medicare at all. The current Medicare system operates alongside the current private pay 
system we have now where the citizenry has choice. They can choose what parts they want and what they don't. Uh, Medicare for all, as they're calling it, is single payer. It is socialized medicine. It means the government is making all health care related decisions on your behalf. You are relinquishing the right to do that. Not to mention, by the way, that most studies are showing this will cost $3.4 trillion to implement. Guess what the current taxable revenues to the government are? $3.4 trillion. We literally would need to double taxes across the board just to pay for this monstrosity. And, Seth, here's the problem based on where this conversation started with you and I this morning. And the problem with that is if it goes to the government, you'll never know what anything costs. There'll never be any transparency on what it costs to have you know, minor surgery done, have a gallbladder out, have a, a hip replaced. You'll never know those things. It'll just be pushed into the system. And, and when people don't care and don't know what the price is, that's when they spend far too much. That drives prices up for everybody. When people know that a hip replacement is going to be $10,000, an aspirin is going to be $5, a mucus recovery, you know, uh, device is going to be whatever. The point is, People then pay attention. They go, no, wait a second. I'm not paying $10 for a Kleenex. I'm not paying $10 for an aspirin. I'll pay $10,000 for a hip replacement. That makes sense. And so they start getting involved consciously with controlling the cost of their own health care. That would never happen with the government in charge. Since the dawn of the American economic system, the consumer has had the power to drive uh, the markets down. Listen, the consumer decides where sports team resides, uh, what shows get renewed on television, even what flavor of Ben and Jerry's ice cream come out next, right? But the consumer doesn't have the power in the day's healthcare system because the consumer doesn't have the information. We need to continue to press for more transparency in the system, require that the healthcare system in its total tell the consumer what things are going to cost before things are before services are rendered to them so that the consumer can make decisions for themselves. And uh, listen, we've said it a lot of times. Where there is a drip, there will be somebody to put a bucket. Sure. If the consumer understands what the costs are, that will bring new competition into the marketplace. And Seth, last question here, because I want to know what you think the impact is going to be on, on, on big pharma, uh, on the pharmaceutical industry, which, by the way, I don't consider to be uh, the devil or a villain. A lot of people do. I don't. I think they save millions of lives around the world each year. Um, but as a result of them having to disclose the price of their medications, of the things that they have created in their laboratories, what impact do you think that'll have in pricing going forward? I'll give you the last word. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to have any direct impact immediately. And here's why I say that. Uh, because you have the system works on what's called an AWP or average wholesale price. That That's a moving target each and every day. That's not going to change the price. What it will do is open the eyes of the consumer, and that will bring new transparency and system and competitive natures into the marketplace. That's sure. it. There's a lot of stakeholders in the pharmaceutical business today. We need to bring transparency on. Everybody's got their hands in that proverbial cookie jar as well. No question. And I want to make sure that I also, me and my family, have access to the drugs we need to uh, create a better quality of life or make our lives longer. Seth, greatly appreciate it. Seth Denson, always good to talk to you. Dave, good to be with you. Thank you so much.